I'm kind of I'm disappointed I didn't make it to the final. That was my, my biggest goal. Me and my training partner, Gil Roberts, you know, he went 40, 44-3, and we have been making plans, you know, for us to be in final. But I'm just excited for him, but training alongside him each and every day for about two years. We've been training together for about two years now, and uh, he's been pushing me. And I get to see what the best in the world feels like, and, you know, his results and my results be able to show. But, you know, I, I know I got more in the tank, and uh, I, I want to drop that world record. I want to keep pushing. Blake, Blake, yeah, right? yeah, Blake, yeah. Uh, how much did uh, Austin Stories kind of, you know, blaze the path for you? I mean, he did. You, I can remember back in 2008 when I was in my college dorm room, never ran a track meet in my life, and seeing him run for the first time. And that inspired me, you know, to, to, to do something better in my life and go out there and try track and field, get in the blaze, you know. And he, he started something great. You know, unfortunately, he didn't get to finish it what he wanted to, so I just want to pick it up where he left off on the track and, and keep breaking records and change the perspective. You know, a lot of people don't know my story or who I am, what I come from. But they see that I'm, I'm a disabled individual running with the best in the world and I overcome my challenge. So that was a uh, birth defect? Uh, yeah, a congenital birth defect. So I've been wearing prosthetics my whole life. What a, Back in that dorm room in 2008. Yeah, 2008 you said? Yeah, 2008. What's uh, the dorm room like? I, I was actually pre-med at the University of Tennessee and I wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. And I was, you know, I, I, that's, that was my passion. But sometimes life throws you curveballs and you have to reassess. And, and I felt like God had a plan for me to, to run track and field. And my whole mission was I wanted to save lives and change lives. But I feel like by being out here, there's a kid out there that's going through something right now. I feel like by seeing me run, it's changed their life before. Medical school, maybe down the road? Yeah, maybe. We'll see. We'll see how fast I can go first. You saw Oscar on TV and were like, I want to do that? Yeah, I want to, I want to do that. And that was almost, you know, nine years ago. Um, I never ran track. I got my first pair of running boots back in 2009. 2010, so I've only been running less than six, seven years. So I'm still running a lot. You know, I have a lot more to learn uh, with stability, with balance, uh, muscle memory. So so much that goes into running, especially running on blades. So I feel like there's a lot more to come. I have a lot more to put out there. And you know, stay focused, stay humble, and keep training hard. And you're going to see some faster times. You think people on blades can run faster? Some scientists say that. Does that bother you? I mean, no, it doesn't. Because at the end of the day, I know my teammates know, and, 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 my, and my family, friends, and family know. I train hard. I train almost six days a week. I'm on the track. I'm in the gym. So you just can't put on the blades and go run fast. You got to put the work in. You got to train hard. You got to train just like the able body and actually overcome more challenges than the average able body person. So for somebody who says that, I just laugh at them. You know, because at the end of the day, I'm running. I'm walking. And the doctor said I would never walk a day in my life. And here I am. So. I think the worst comments and, and the points and the last I've ever had in my life, so I'm, I'm okay with it. He's Blade Runner. Do you have a nickname? Uh, Leafster. Yeah, my last name's Leaper, so Leaper. Everybody thinks I made this up, but that's my that's my real last name, Leaper. You know, take the leap. That's, that's what I like to say. Take the leap in life. Take a leap of faith. Just take the leap and to take it to the next level. Do you do long jump? Do you do anything else? No, I just running. I'm a sprinter. Do you uh, maybe relay to you? Yeah, I mean, that was, that was my goal is to hopefully try to make the 4x4 four four relay team. You know, one step at a time. I knew it was going to be extremely hard to make the the team individually, so in my head I was like, hey, I want to make finals, let's make top six, and maybe I make a relay team. But, you know, hopefully my two times with a 45-5, 45-2-5, you know, I start turning heads, and in the future I can get faster and, and be in that round. This is my first national championship. I was like a rookie. I was just taking it all in. I was just happy to make it to semifinals, to be honest with you. But, you know, every time I come back here and every race I run on this level, I'm going to be learning more about myself, about this atmosphere, and, and start a little, become a little more professional to so get faster. When did you know that you were in this meet? Uh, I found out on Tuesday night. <laughs> yeah. So I had a, a time from last year with the 46-1. Uh, I wrote the petition, you know, it's trying to get in. Um, they, they, at first they went and I was like fourth, fifth in line, a couple guys scratched. I, was, I thought, you know, I was over my season on Wednesday down in San Diego. I figured that's, that's it. I get a call on Tuesday night from my team saying, hey, you got in. I booked a flight that night, flew out up here, and so so within two days it was a turnaround from you know hanging out, training, getting ready for another training session, to being on the world's biggest stage. So it's it's been a whirlwind past two days. And did say, someone scratch for you to make it? To yes, yes. Yeah, somebody had somebody ended up scratching for me to get in, and then last night somebody scratched. Or somebody did that DQ. I was 17 by three thousandths of a second. So we're talking about three thousandths of a second, and somebody scratched it for me to come out here and break the world records. It's pretty awesome. How did Woodhall come along now and uh, go to college, you know, uh, on Blaze? How do you feel dude, about just, he's probably a relay teammate of yours in the Olympics, right? I am excited for him. Um, just to see him, you know, you got to think, I didn't get my Blaze until I was 19 years old. He got his at 16, 15. That's exciting. That's what it's all about. Oscar inspired a generation. Hope I can inspire a generation. And Hunter's going to inspire a generation. 
to where we want to start getting blades out there to younger kids and showing them that it doesn't matter your disability. You go out there and you try hard. And, and the things that Hunter's going to be able to do in the future, and it starts out being the first D1 signed college athlete with a disability, it's awesome. That's what it's all about. Us coming together, fighting, and showing people something different. So I'm excited for him. Yeah, so you know, I came off a, a, a two-year suspension. I got, I got uh, suspended for a testing positive for a, a medical bottle breakdown of cocaine. That was about two years in my life, and it was considered the low point in my life. You know, I lost the, the Rio Olympic Games. I lost sponsorship. I lost a lot of financial support, and uh, I lost my identity for a second. And but I can honestly say, being suspended and make, had me even have to make a decision to turn my life completely around was probably the best thing that ever happened to me. I uh, vowed myself to stay sober for the past two years and, and it continues my sobriety and I've been training hard and focusing hard and uh, you know I, I want to show people that even though you might make mistakes we know none of us walk on this earth perfect so I hope they can look at my story and say you know he made a mistake but he battled back and with those two years I didn't give up and I came out here and broke the world record that's a true testament whatever failures you have in your life it's just that, that setback is just a setup for a comeback and I feel like coming out here was my comeback so thank you guys appreciate it